Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Strange Love. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. This evening's special guest is photographer Mark Coleman. Hello, hello. How are you doing this evening, Mark? Wonderful, and you? I'm doing very well. This is going to be our, our short format show, and we want to talk about commercial photography. Right on. And what that means to you. So why don't you let those of us who don't have a clear picture of what a commercial photographer does? Well, uh, commercial photographers do all kinds of different things, but basically I've been in uh, fashion and advertising for over 20 years. I know I look a lot younger than that, but uh, it's true. You do. You, so. you appear as though someone may have taken your face and... And just pulled it back behind I, the couch. Yeah, you know, I've I've had uh, I've you had look the, marvelous. Uh, I've had the Mark. pinch treatment in Photoshop. It works miracles. Mm, very nice. But no, I've worked in um, worked in Milan, Madrid, San Francisco, L.A. and mainly shoot people advertising, which led me into fine art, which we'll talk about later, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, having worked in all those places, what brought you to Portland? Well, it's kind of a long story. I met this girl, and uh, she had an opportunity to uh, work here, and I'd never been here. She'd never been here. I was sick of L.A. I'd been in downtown mm-hmm. L.A. for 16 years, living in an artist's loft, and so uh, took a chance. Never even been here, and I love it. 16 years in L.A.? 16 wow. years in glorious downtown L.A. in an artist's loft. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, glorious is not a word that I would normally use it, to describe it's, LA. Uh, it's not. It's you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty intense. It was taking a lot more out of me than it was giving back. So, yeah. how long have you been in Portland now? About a year and a half. And you like it? I You're love here. it. The people are wonderful, mm-hmm. and uh, I like the weather. I can ride my bike everywhere. I don't need a car. I don't have to worry about getting killed every day. It's mm-hmm. great. Yeah, that's one of the things I like about Portland too is the lack of being killed. Yeah, it's, it's important. So what are some of your favorite, not necessarily people that you've shot, but subjects that you've shot for, well, photo I, situations that you've been in? <laughs> well, what I like to do, I, I like to, uh, I've gotten to where I really like working with bands, musicians. I've shot the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I've worked with uh, Adrian Ballou and Trey Gunn of King Crimson. I've shot some hip hoppers mm-hmm. and uh, they're kind of a little bit more real than uh, celebrities or models, so it's really fun. I'm able to do more creative work with them, so mm-hmm. that's what I really enjoy. I like working with uh, with ar- other artists. If you're listening to the show uh, live, you'll find the link in the chat room. If you're listening to it on MP3, you'll be able to find the link to his uh, the musicians that he shot. So it's primarily primarily bands or you, you do a lot of work with models and, and i do my yeah. background's really in fashion and advertising mm-hmm. so i do a lot of actors headshots i do a lot of uh commission portraits i do some uh portraits where i combine my fine art techniques with uh you know fashion photography mm-hmm. kind of uh cyborgian odd looking things we've mm-hmm. seen some of amber case yes absolutely they were absolutely beautiful the lovely amber case yes. and you have others on your website as well i do yeah. And what's the what's the web? Just I mean, we can just say what the website is. For well, people my to uh, my fine art work is Mark Coleman M A R K C O L M E N dot com. My commercial work is spelled differently because my commercial clients are often conservative, and it's Mark Coleman with an E photo dot com. Huh. Okay. Yeah. And that's that's just kind of is that like corporate kind of. It's not corporate at all. Like it's more kind of uh, actors, models. Um, oh, gotcha. Some magazine tear sheets I've done of fashion spreads. So what do you primarily shoot? I mean, you primarily shoot in film or digital? Or, I primarily or both? shoot digital okay. um, for commercial work. I still shoot a lot of uh, old film cameras that you know still have the equivalent of like 80 megapixels, which is uh, a very expensive digital camera, if you can even get that. So <laughs> you brought I do. your yeah, beautiful I, I have uh, my, uh, Roliflex. My here. lovely darling, my yeah. Roliflex SL66, the wow. love of my life. Which I think was around your neck the first time I met you. <laughs> it probably was, yeah. <laughs> beautiful camera. I love it. It's, uh, it's a thing of beauty. And that's what they call the full format camera? It's a medium, medium format, format camera. It shoots right. two and a quarter square wow. film and uh, you know, scan that is like 80 megapixels. So it's very versatile. You can do both landscape and uh, like headshots and model shots. Yeah, like depending that. on what lenses you use. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Huh? Wow. So, why did you become a photographer? 
Well, I was always attracted to visual things. And mm -hmm. uh, really, you know, I got around the age where I was getting pressured to go to school. And uh, I wanted to pick something that I thought I'd be happy doing. And uh, it seemed like a creative career. And then, you know, you combine uh, photography with uh, beautiful young women. It's very <laughs> appealing to a 19-year-old guy. But you made it as a photographer. Yeah. As opposed to, I, I've known, you know, maybe 20 people. Right. From the time I was 15 until, you know, now that tried to be a photographer that tried to make you know right. take classes and I tried was, to do it i was really fortunate in that I, I went to school for a couple of years which that was okay i learned a lot of techniques but i was fortunate to uh have a mentor that had worked in new york and paris and he was a great advertising photographer and working for him kind of really made the difference you know mm -hmm. for me i was able to really learn some things you can't learn in school so what about uh projects you're doing right now here in portland like well, a I'm, book, perhaps? yeah, I'm, I'm working on a book of, uh, I've been shooting in cemeteries for about three years, and I started doing this in L.A. It's kind of yeah. like one of the few places in L.A. where you can kind of get away from people and be outdoors. It's in the cemetery. <laughs> so you, you've got a few, a few shots on your website. Yeah, actually, there's a separate yeah. site for the book. It's called yeah. hiddenwithin.com. Okay. And I, I was wondering, when I was looking at the site with Cami, it seems to me... Um, in a cemetery as a setting. I mean, this is a place of, of death and, and the end of life. Right. But it seems like such a lively place. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's uh, there's a lot of really unusual visual combinations there that kind of like play off the, like a, a flower coming up in the spring right, amongst all right. the tombstones. It's, uh, I found a lot of beauty and peace there. And I, I think the the act of searching for photographs, being alone with the camera and looking for a simple composition is almost like a zen-like thing for me where I feel like I'm very much in the now and I'm kind of at one with everything and I lose track of time and uh, it's very enjoyable. So on a project like that, are you, um, are you just going out and uh, taking a lot of pictures of everything or are you um, really spending a lot of time walking through and looking at shots and being very uh, meticulous about what you're going to set up and what you're actually going to when you click the shutter. Yeah, I'm much more, I don't shoot that much film. I'll maybe shoot um, 24 exposures tops, which is two rolls of film wow. on the Rolly Flex. And I do take a lot of time and I carefully look for compositions. And, you know, a lot of people um, go out there and burn a ton of film or shoot a lot of pixels, but I t try to take my time and find the perfect composition. A lot of times I won't shoot five or six frames and I'll leave if I'm not feeling it or if it's not happening. How about how about if you have a, a model or a musician or another subject when you go into the shoot? Is it different there or then it's you totally, it totally it's totally okay. different. Shooting people you have to be really fast. And uh, I have shot people in cemeteries, and I try to be really fast because they're more comfortable. You can catch things, you know, if the person doesn't have to worry about what you're doing, if you can just be right there when they're ready and capture it. So it's totally different. But generally, you're sh you're you're clicking off more more shots. Yeah, with a person rather than is yeah. That, is that where landscape. the digital camera would come more in handy? Well, not really. I mean, I did the same thing with film for many, many years. It's mm -hmm. just a different technique because with people, it's just important to be very fast and capture things in a quick way because they, you know, a lot of times people are, are apprehensive about being photographed or it's you're catching action, so you need to be yeah. very fast. People kind of have a split section, a split second of perfection whereas exactly. something that's stationary can be beautiful for 100 years. Right. Yeah, and you can take your time and compose things. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So the entire cemetery book was shot on the Rolleiflex. It was shot all on different Rolly Flex cameras. I used some twin lens reflex cameras, which are old cameras that has one lens on top of the other. Mm -hmm. And um, the top lens is what you see through, and the bottom lens is what actually records the image onto film. So I shot a lot of them in Los Angeles. I've shot in Lone Fir Cemetery here. I've shot Arizona, New Mexico, all over. How many cemeteries do you think you visited? It's hard to say. Um, I don't know, probably like 40. Wow. Something like that. But... It becomes addicting. That's it's really a strange impressive. thing. There's, a, I, I remember a couple, maybe it was a couple months ago, after, just after I met you the first time at Beer and Blog, very briefly, I found the, uh, the, the website for the book. Right. And 
I couldn't help thinking there's a cemetery that's not too far from our house that we've never been to. And when I was a kid, I used to love to go to cemeteries. Yeah. I used to love to wander around them, and I never took photos. Right. But I used to love to be in the cemeteries because you could find the oddest things, and the stones were always so beautiful. And it was always, growing up in California, I think anywhere in California, one of the most peaceful places you can find to be is a cemetery. It's true. Just because there's so much going on everywhere else. Right. And you can really discover some uh, <laughs> some interesting things. It can be, you know, it can be very uplifting. It can be very sad. Mm-hmm. I've had times where I've cried in cemeteries mm-hmm. over things I've found. And uh, it's uh, it becomes addicting after a while. Yeah. There's a cemetery that's by our house. And now every time I we go past it, I always wonder. I was like, God, I wonder... He should look at that cemetery. I need to go look at that cemetery. Yeah, I need to look at that cemetery. I'll I'll, I'll tell you where it is. It's okay, a, it's a cool old cemetery. So uh, that's interesting. Um, back to focusing on the, <laughs> the book and the cemeteries, but but uh, you know, I mean, if you go up and you actually see see the website and see some of the pictures, it's very exciting. I think, you know, I think this Thanks. is going to be a really nice book i know we've been looking at it and going wow this is right when can we get this right yeah um when when does it come out well actually it's a pre-order and i've kind of met my quota so i'm on the verge of going to press now so i would think um within the next six weeks great should be printed so you were saying going through uh the cemetery on the photo shoot and the emotions that you have going through there right i mean is it really that kind of trying to capture that in the photograph i mean is it I don't like consciously go in with any kind of preconceived idea other than visually a lot of times I do. I I will set myself some sort of visual thing that I'd like to do all day, like, I don't know, a certain technique, and I'll try to apply it to things. But then I just try to be open to whatever, you know, happens. Right. So it's more kind of a spontaneous thing. So so you go in with a certain technique like right i go in with say i'm going to i did a series where i photographed uh the flowers that were in front of the stone and have the stone a lot of times it had the person's face on it out of focus in the background Mm, i said do that for one time so i I try to do different things because photographically it's interesting to give yourself some sort of guideline to go by so that you can kind of learn something from it each time and i try to do something different every time i go so you kind of you sort of go in with a plan, yeah, so to speak, but then you're also going to be op- open up to the surroundings of what's going to happen. Exactly. What, what moves you. and Try to be a gonna... little bit spontaneous. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think all good art is that way, right? I think so, too. I think uh, someone was talking about Inverge, about, uh, you know, do what you think you're going to do and then try to make as many mistakes as you can and right. try different things different things because that's when you're going to discover something truly unique what's the uh, that's a good question what is the biggest mistake you've made in photography that really turned out well um becoming a photographer probably <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> but i mean is there something that you can think of that you that you did and you were like oh crap you know, um and then when well yeah out, this is kind of like, strange but uh I, I had a neighbor i was out of town and my neighbor watered my plants and i you know being an artist my studio was chaotic place and I left a print on the floor and the water got on it and uh, oh. kind of like made the colors run somehow and I had a piece of uh, mylar laying on the floor beside it and I saw it reflected in the mylar and that started me on a whole series of uh, abstractions that are basically colors reflected in mylar and it was just some kind of strange observation just sitting in the studio going oh oh those are beautiful that's, uh, wow. I, oh, thanks. I looked at those um, and I think Media Chick has put that link in the chat room, the abstractions <laughs> link. She's so good. <laughs> um, th- those were really beautiful. Thanks. It was all inspired by uh, a certain album by King Crimson, which I would play at like uh, ear bleeding levels when I would do this technique. And the technique was really interesting because it was all natural light in my studio. So I only had two hours a day where the light would work and the light would move and I'd have to move the mylar and whatever the fabric was. And I, it would be all spontaneous and it would be very intense. And it was a really fun color exploration. If you guys go look at the website, you'll see uh, see what it looks so like. You, so in that case, you were a real slave to, to what was going on with the light right. every day. Yeah, and I had to, like if, I, if ideas were happening, I only had a short amount of time to make it happen, and it was a situation where I had a lot of technical limitations, so I had to be very focused, and it was a very intense way of making images that was kind of addicting too, but it was totally different than the cemetery where I can take my time. This was a finite amount of time, and if I didn't get it done, the sun is gone, and I have to wait. So what what percentage, I mean, you know, how much do you really look at the available light 
and the environment and trying to capture that environment at the time? And then where do you just go ahead and do what photographers do with with light and and reflect reflect I can't remember what they're reflectors. called the reflectors yeah. and, and and all of that. Well, generally, uh, in commercial photography, you do what you you try to set up the lighting the way you want it to be, ideally. Right. But sometimes right. you're at the mercy of the environment, and you do the best you can with what you have right. to work with. If I have a choice, like if I'm I'm doing cemetery photography, I much prefer it to be an overcast day. Sure. And sure. if the sun's out, I just don't go. I just don't do mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing I I really learned from a photographer was that an overcast day is always better, right? Than a sunny day, and I learned that on our it's wedding diffused day. Diffused light, right? yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. It's beautiful. I mean, there are places like Portland, but I lived in Milan for a year, Milan, Italy, and uh, you got the sun maybe one day a month. And I know photographers in some places like you know Miami, where if the sun's not out, they go, "Oh my God, we got to cancel. It's cloudy." <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know? living in Portland, a lot of diffused light, a lot yeah, of cloudy the days. The light's beautiful here. Yeah, I yeah. love it. And the rain, I mean, do you, do you get do you do a lot of stuff out in the rain? I do you, sometimes. You know, yeah. if it's not actually coming down, it's great to shoot right after it's rained when yeah. everything's wet. It's beautiful. It's I just, like it. Yeah, yeah. I always like to see, like, um, photographs and things that are shot, like, right right after a big rainstorm right. or, or, or yeah. if you're getting somehow, you know, kind of shot in the rain or whatever. But, sure. You know, I live in Portland, so. Yeah. It's, so It's a good thing. Um, you actually brought some uh, uh, a couple uh, magazines I did. as well. Did you want to take a look? Because you've got some. There's one that you have a cover. Yeah. Here, you shot uh, several co- covers. This is uh, a magazine uh, from Amsterdam. It's actually an international photography magazine called Amazing. And I did, uh, did a cover and they did a 10 page spread on me. And this image is up on his website as well. That's yes. right. So it's, it's, can you describe the, the image there? A little bit well it's a close-up of a woman that's uh sucking a toe and it is her toe a lot of people ask me if it is <laughs> and uh, this image it really offends some people i had a woman at a art uh, opening one time told me that uh it reminded her of child prostitution oh geez child <laughs> prostitution yeah that's what she said wow okay. I... so you get all kind of things at, at gallery openings that are very exciting so let me let me ask this was not. This is not done in Photoshop. So, what is the flower overlay? How is the flower overlay done? Well, what exa- What that is exactly? That's some Japanese paper, and uh, I never really tell my techniques on the first date. So uh, the next time you have me on, but no, I, I do a layering technique that's <laughs> mm-hmm. very similar to what you do in Photoshop. Only I, I didn't at the time. I wasn't using Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this was I all do. manually manually created. Right. Wow. It's all with film. Which nice. is the way I started, and Photoshop came along and made it easier to do, but right, and, and different. Right. You know, I can do some different things in Photoshop that I didn't do with film. So, so you do, you actually do both. You learn uh, the yeah, manual absolutely. technique, and and you also use Photoshop for digital. I use work any as well. kind of creative tool I can get. I'm not one of those people that think, oh, it's film or digital. Oh, wow. and uh, it a tool is a tool. I don't care if there's some new thing I can do. I'm totally open to it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like. Playing with synthesizers and drum yeah, boxes. Yeah, if, if you're not, you're just going to lose. You playing know, in a jazz trio with a piano it. and a drums and a bass, right? Right. You've got, you got to experiment. Are there any other programs that you use aside from Photoshop? Uh, no. I mean, I use like Bridge to edit things and mm-hmm. uh, may use Aperture someday. But uh, basically Photoshop. It's Really, image making is pretty simple. I mean, there's all kind of complicated things you can do, but it really comes down to like something that really has visual impact and it makes people either feel something or think. And it doesn't really matter how you do it, whether you're using a pinhole camera with film or you're you know, doing 10,000 layers in Photoshop. The end result, it's either has something or it doesn't. So I have to tell you, um, when, I, when I first looked at your website and I was browsing through your photos, I found this one. It's right here, and I'm not going to show you. It's a leaf torso. And I don't know what it is. There was something about this particular image. And yeah. I, you can't see it well on the camera. So if you're watching live, I suggest you just go to the website. It's and kind of like it. a leaf superimposed um, on a woman's body. Right. And That's I stared, I stared at it. this picture for like 10 minutes before I moved on. And then I was like, God, okay. That's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> I, and still, of all of, the, of all of the images I've seen that you've done, I still, I just absolutely love this. Thank you. There's just something about this particular image that really speaks to me and i don't know i just love that particular image so um we're looking at the magazine with cover you've done other covers and um 
how about uh, the musicians? Uh, you know, you've shot a bunch of... I have. I've, I've shot um, Adrian Ballou with you, King Crimson. And you're doing a cover for him? I shot, uh, yeah, I shot a poster for him oh, and great. a t-shirt for his uh, recent tour, which was actually some art. The way I make art is uh, if someone hires me to shoot something, say, for their CD... I make a lot of versions because I like to experiment. I like to try all these different things. So he ended up picking a very conservative image for the CD. Did you present that all to him when you're done? Yeah, I do. You've got 20 ideas. I kind of do. And Uh depending on the artist, sometimes I I show them as I make them and, Uh you know, we get a little feedback from them. So it's kind of collaborative. That's very nice. Yeah, I get some feedback of what they're looking for, but... uh, you know, he he uh, didn't pick this one image that was my favorite, and it right. became so popular with other people that they said, "Adrian, you know, man, you <laughs> you got to do a poster of this. I want this on my wall." So he did a poster and he did a T-shirt. Uh huh. So it's cool. So there's a you know, so it sounds like there was a bit of interaction with between you and Adrian and just working on that. And right. Absolutely. That's cool. Very cool. Yeah. Back and to I, normals. You know. Well, no, we did music the musicians because I mean, you did <laughs> then you know the Red Hot Chili Peppers, you, right? You, yeah, you I tell shot, us a little I, bit about that. Oh shoot. yeah, my Chili Pepper story. Basically, what happened is I was uh, in a magazine in L.A. called Hot Lava, and they done a, did a ten sp- page uh, spread on my art, and they called me like a couple of months later, and they said, "You're not going to believe this, but uh, we were going to shoot the Red Hot Chili Peppers for the cover of our magazine, and we were going to have a friend shoot it, and." Uh, Anthony said, we're not going to do it unless Mark Coleman shoots it. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. they. Do you, uh, do you know where he saw your work? In the magazine, in a previous issue. Oh, great. Yeah, wow. the same magazine. So, uh, they came to my studio, and the uh, the Warner Brothers guy said, look, man, you're going to have 10 minutes. They're going to come. They're going to leave. And that's it. And I'm like, okay. So, they came. I shot them in 10 minutes, and they hung out for like an hour and a half afterwards <laughs> and uh, played their latest unreleased CD, and were totally cool. Oh, nice. So you yeah. guys just sort of hung out? Yeah, we hung out, and it w- wasn't any weird fanboy stuff. They were real people, and it sure. was, uh, it was Now, when great. you shoot a subject, I mean, you know, are you are you the master? Of, you know, it's like, okay, I want you to do this. I want you to go here. Now, move your arm over here. Do this. I, am, I am like that when I shoot people if they let me, because okay. I, I'm not going to let them do anything to... Um, F up my picture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, with celebrities, so it who it is. generally, uh, they have certain things they will do and they won't do. And Dave Navarro was in the band at the time. And right. He's not really kind of a, a happy, goofy, uh, chili pepper <laughs> kind of guy. And, you know, I wanted to do some of that stuff. And he said, I wouldn't push for that if I were you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but they still did what I wanted. They laid down on the ground. I shut down on them. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm trying to shoot them, and they're grabbing the legs of my tripod and, like, pulling it around. So <laughs> it was kind of crazy. So it was a little bit more like you kind of went in, again, went in with a bit of a plan, and then you kind of let Right. Let On situation. a commercial shoot, I always have, like, four or five plans because you don't know what's going to happen, and it has to happen. There's no do it later, oh, don't do it uh, over again. How many cameras, too? You must yeah, have, like, I have at least, like, three or four cameras because things can break. Yeah, And they yeah. do, and you got to have backups. So. you got to be ready to go. Yeah, so it, the commercial shoot's totally different than, like, the, my fine art stuff where I have time to do things. It's very pressurized, and you have to deliver, and it's very intense. It's not always fun. It's rarely fun, actually. So in the fine arts one, it's kind of your thing. You're the boss. Right. You're, you're doing it for yourself. Exactly, and I can take it as far as I can, yeah. which is nice. And then for the commercial stuff, you're not the boss. No, I'm limited and I'm usually following someone else's direction. And I try to get them to, hey, after we do your thing, why don't we try this? Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times that ends up being what they go with. And you also, so you did a, did you do a Jethro Tull band shoot as well? Yeah, I've shot Jethro Tull several times. They've been very nice to me and uh, hung out with them many times. And uh, he's like the... uh, Probably the richest guy I've ever met. He's, he's, really? He's a, yeah, he's a pretty interesting guy. He made uh, well, a whole lot of money. Well, those stadium rocker uh, kind of guys from the 70s. Yeah, but he was cash. he was smart in that he took all his cash from the 70s and got into salmon farming. Oh, there you and, go. Uh, yeah, he had like 5% of the UK market for a while I before like he got out of it. Yeah, he's a very smart guy, Ian Anderson. And yeah, Ian Anderson. So it was like, uh, so they saw your work and you got in there too. Well, actually, I, the way I, I'm kind of ashamed to say, but the way I got in with them is I was a huge fan. I hid uh, a camera body in one sock, <laughs> a lens in the other, 
snuck in, did pictures of him. The next time I saw him, I did some of my art treatments, and I showed the guy, and I said, yeah. well, I did these pictures, and I'd love to photograph you guys, and uh, they were open to it. Now, so, so, uh, so, so wait a minute, you went nice to a concert, them. you went to a yeah, show, right. and you snuck in with a camera, you did the I whole did. underground thing and shot yeah, him? Yeah, and, then... and I actually got busted, too, but I had a dummy <laughs> roll of film with me that I gave the guy, oh, great. and he went away with it thinking he'd had me so uh, there you go yeah i'm shifty and that's how you do it and, yeah. and you know what you got the gig <laughs> exactly sometimes you got to do what you got to do oh that's great yeah, that's a that's lesson great. to all you people out there that's right that's right <laughs> okay we have a few valid okay um chat room questions uh-oh uh-oh um really focusing on the, the cemetery book the book what is the book called again it's called Hidden Within: My Life Amongst the Dead. And, and what's the what's the web, There's a website. It's, yeah, it's hiddenwithin.com. Easy to remember. Yeah. No um, I'm not sure who asked the question, but they'd like to know where are your favorite cemeteries. My favorite cemeteries. Well, there's actually several in LA I like a lot. There's one called Hollywood Forever, mm-hmm. and uh, Johnny Ramone. They have a big statue of him, and it's very. They it's, have a statue of Johnny Ramone. Yeah. It's yeah, they Valentino. have they have some yeah they have some very strange things. They have a Rolls Royce hearse. Oh and wow! It's, it's very it's like you would imagine a Hollywood cemetery would be. They have like angels where people put gu- real guitars over them. This the sounds more like a, a Las Vegas cemetery. It's crazy. Than a Hollywood I've seen, cemetery, I've seen right? turntables with graffiti on somebody's grave. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's really cool. I like some of the really old ones. I like Evergreen Cemetery a lot, but it's. Uh, it's dangerous because there's a gang that kind of lives there called the Evergreen Dukes. They're, oh, lovely. Mm. Yeah, they're a bunch of junkies. And uh, there's actually one guy that lives in the cemetery. And I've had encounters with him from a distance many times. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes he's growling and screaming like someone's killing him. And mm-hmm. other times he stands with his hands like this above his head and he just doesn't move for hours. Have you ever... Wow. Taking pictures of him? <laughs> no, I tried to avoid his part of the cemetery. I'm kind of like watching my back for the gang members all yeah, the time when yeah. I'm there. But it, it's the oldest cemetery in L.A. and it has some really interesting stones and weird... I've seen some very weird things there. I saw a grave of a 15-year-old girl. She died in 1905 and someone had put 13 purple eggplants on it. And I huh. don't know the meaning of that and... Uh, yeah, that is some strange, uh, you know, witchcraft thing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna have As to my do my, grandma would my googling and find say, out what eggplants it's gypsies. signifies. It's yeah. gypsies. It probably my, is. What grandma would use yeah, to say? I've, I've I've I don't know. I don't know. My parents used to threaten right. to sell me to gypsies. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my final favorite cemetery has been my hometown of Paducah, Kentucky, called Oak Grove, and Paducah, it's uh, Kentucky. Yeah, it's a very old cemetery. There's. Uh, there's some strange. One stone was um, Willie Brown, uh, faithful servant of the Jones family. You oh, know, wow! Faithful colored yeah. servant. I yeah, say. yeah, yeah. Wow. Strange things like that. Wow, wow. So, so yeah. I did where the accent was from, and now I know. So I was just you wondering. Do. You were talking <laughs> about. Uh, do you generally? I mean, are you open to like if you encounter someone while well, you know, say you're out, maybe not in the cemetery, or you're doing some shooting, and you encounter people, and you think, hey, I want to shoot this person do you do that you often? know i i do that some i'm kind of weird about doing that with women because they always think that you're some kind of freak which i am but i'm a professional freak exactly i'm the kind you don't have to worry about <laughs> yeah it's, but i want to put you in creepy, pictures creepy, baby creepy yeah Damn, now know? that now that i'm want to make a movie <laughs> yeah and now that i'm on yeah. on this subject though i am i want to do a series of unusual looking people in portland so if you're out there you know anyone that looks unusual <laughs> Geeks, nerds, albinos, strange people. <laughs> I'm totally looking to do that. I see Don's raising his hand. Okay, yeah. you're on the list, Don. You're number one. Yeah, there's a reason I'm not on camera, by the way. Um, that is. There no, is, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Dr. Normal is a hideous man. I am a man. man. I'll tell you guys what he looks like later. Yeah, yeah. You know, after hours. Me. David Lynch has nothing on mm. me, yeah. man. We have another question, which is, have you ever been to Gettysburg? No, Ooh. but I've heard they have great cemetery there. Yeah, but you know, when I was a kid, it was there, and it was like, you know, it's like one of those national treasures, uh, so yeah. to speak. And you're in the bus, and the tour oh, bus stops, yeah. and you, right. I, I mean, I, I I can show you some photographs of Gettysburg, right? Yeah, I was yeah, running around in a Boy Scout uniform, right, on a trip. Yeah, and um, and uh, it, it's it wasn't in the photographs and stuff. It just it was sort of like you stop on the road, and it's like, and over here the army came and did this, and you're like, and there's bullets out there and stuff and then everyone piles in the bus and leaves i mean right, that was yeah. my sure memory of it i um 
I, I actually did a lot of photography on that trip. Yeah, I was cool. a Boy Scout and went back to Washington and right. you had my 35 millimeter Pentax. There and you go. I found, and this is kind of an interesting story, I'm sure it's gone now, but there's this photograph of the White House and you'd see it on television, you would see this photograph in news magazines and uh, when we were at the White House... There's this, I'm sure it's all different now yeah. in this post-9-11 world. <laughs> I'm sure. But there was uh, a, a, a fence, you know, made of, of um, a wire fence around this whole thing. And you go up and you're like, oh, okay, shoot. Behind the wire. And you realize that someone had clipped out this one section of fence, just this tiny section of fence, perfectly big enough for a lens. Okay. You'd stick your lens through this hole. There's the picture. There's that White okay. House picture you <laughs> they saw. They had it framed for so you, right? I, I was like, this is the... And yeah. I stuck my lens right. in and I'm focusing. And I'm like, tick, 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 yeah. tick, tick. So I've got this picture of the White House, which is like, that's the picture you saw in yeah, Newsweek right. every week. And there's like, the president's sure. doing this and that. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard to take a bad picture of certain things. When I first went to Yosemite and I saw Half Dome, it's like, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah, yeah, Ansel, he did a great job, but try to take a bad picture of Half Dome. <laughs> exactly. It's amazing, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> Half Dome... Um, yeah, I remember seeing that too. I had a, I had a one ten camera. You remember okay. those? Okay. Oh yeah, the little like tiny a negatives. Little kid, right? In the early seventies. Yeah, and I had some of those. Yeah, I finally shot so many good pictures that. Wait, was that Mom the one? Dad, was it yeah. the with the two hard things yep. on either side and the little? Yeah, and the negatives are about as big as your thumb. I remember. Yeah, I yeah, had tiny. one of those. It was like yeah. Yeah, really horrid of, quality for the terrible. most part. Terrible. I mean, I went on a hiking trip and shot the three sisters, and finally it was right. like, all right, yeah, we should get you a 35 millimeter for your birthday. It's exactly. like, well, that would have been handy as we hiked the three sisters. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because it's just like, wow. I mean, it, it, it's hard to take a bad picture of the three sisters. Sure. Hard to take a bad picture of Half Dome. Right, it's true. You know? Yeah. And, the, and you don't, as a photographer, you don't want to go to those places, right? I don't. I mean, it, yeah. if I've seen someone like Ansel has kind of done it with, I'm not into scenic photography, but you know, yeah. like you know, if you're if you're a painter and you're going to go start painting melting clocks, good luck. You know, you're not going to top Salvador Dali. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. So why even try? Do something different. Now, what about so. around the city, like the city of Portland? What about bridges, it? things like that? I'm or is not. It I don't overdone. do that kind of photography. Overdone. That's not yeah. my thing. There are some people that are very good at yeah. that, and uh, I just don't. That doesn't really inspire me. I'm you kind like- of. People. I like people, and I like doing strange things yeah. that maybe other people aren't doing or interested in. Well, it's like when we were in Cathedral Park this last weekend mm-hmm. for the Pirate Festival, right? Yeah. And it's right there, yeah. St. John's Bridge, and uh, it's beautiful, right? Oh, yeah. And it even started raining, yeah. and I'm taking pictures with my, I just got my iPhone, right? Right. And it's like, yeah, these are, these are cool, you know? I mean, yeah. if, if I had a nice camera here, I probably... Yeah, there's you know. a guy, uh, I shouldn't give him a plug unless they give me a free camera, but there's a guy that works at Blue Moon Camera and Machine named Zeb in, uh, in St. John's. Give Mark a camera. Yes, I want a Rolly Flex, please. Wow. Anyway, he's done an amazing series of uh, the St. John's Bridge. You should, yeah. You should oh, check yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. St. John's. St. John's, baby. St. John's we, rocks. We have one more question before we go. Yep. And it is, what, what's your opinion of photographers who refuse to take digital photos, who only work on film? I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but, uh, you know, that's fine. I mean, uh, I don't see the reason, really. It's just a digital's another tool. A yeah. lot of people are threatened by it, and, but uh, I think it's totally cool. If that's your thing, you want to work just with film, go for it. Everything has its... Yeah, everything has its place. And if you're comfortable with that, I mean, some people have made their whole career shooting with film. It's ridiculous for them to have to change, you know? So stick with it. What else? Anything else on photography or just the upcoming book? Well, I'm uh, I'm doing a silly uh, video blog, and uh, it's it's on Blip TV. It's markcoleman.blip.com. TV, I think hmm. she knows over there, and it's uh, it's basically me as a, a crazy character uh, doing photo tutorials. I'm trying to bring people from the level of beginner to more than that. Cool, yeah. yeah. Well, Mark, we really appreciate having you on the show this evening. Well, thank you. It was fun. It's been a lovely night. Um, thanks everybody for listening. That's right. And so you'll all be waking up early for Word Camp tomorrow, right? Oh, no, yes. You're yes, going to Word Camp. I'll be there. That's awesome. Um, next week on the show, we've got Gary Walter. Gary Walter. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks, Mark. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>